What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out Me the X47B, America's 1.5 billion stealth drone. That's B, billion dollar stealth drone. Whew. I'm interested to watch this. This is by US Military News. Uh, you know how I feel about this channel. It's one of, if not the best, uh, military news channel for military equipment on YouTube. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So let's watch this, let's learn some stuff, and let's have some fun. Do I have to say anything before we get started? I don't think I do. I think we should just get straight into it, shouldn't we? Let's watch it, let's learn, and let's figure out why America spent $1.5 billion on this drone. Meet the X-47B, America's $1.5 billion stealth drone. It looks like a bomber. It definitely looks like a bomber, doesn't it? Absolutely mental. The US Navy almost developed a stealthy arm. That looks like a UFO. That's a UFO, that. That's not real. Surely not. That's not real, right? Let me go back. Is that real? I don't think that's real. Almost developed a stealthy no. carrier launched attack. No, it's not. Bring new range dimensions to maritime power projection. That's not real. I thought it was at first, this but it's not. Would have conducted high risk forward offensive missions against enemy air defenses, enemy surface ships, and even adversarial fighter it's aircraft. A spa that's a spaceship. Moreover, that's a spaceship. Its kind drone had the potential to serve as a carrier launch refueler. That's mental. The drone was based on the Northrop Grumman developed X 47B demonstrator aircraft, which had already achieved a significant milestone of landing autonomously on an aircraft carrier as part of the Navy's unmanned carrier launched airborne surveillance and strike, or. Autonomous. Is it these are space, we're making space we're making UFO these are UFOs. It, honestly, if that packed up on my drive and an alien dropped out, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Of course an alien would be in there. Look at it. U class program. Despite the achievement, extensive debate and programmatic deliberation led to the cancellation of the U-Class program. What? Instead, the Navy opted to develop a less stealthy and unarmed refueler drone called the MQ-25 Stingray. Whoa. That's mental. On March 18, 2021, some prominent members of Congress called on the Navy to resume the development of a U-Class-like capability. The Navy needs to develop an unmanned, long-range carrier-based penetrating strike capability. Yet this nascent U-Class program was usurped to field a far less capable MQ-25 tanking drone. Okay. Representative Bob Whitman, House Armed Services Subcommittee on Sea Power and Projection Forces ranking member, set in prepared marks in Congress. Do you know what? I, I put up a video yesterday about um, Russia trying to do a 6th gen aircraft. And everyone in the comments, apart from a couple, were like, there's no way. This just lies. Like, Russia can't do this. Look how advanced America is. Look at this. Look at this. No other country has got a chance of catching up to this. Look at it. It's mental. Absolutely mental. Retired in April 2015, the U.S. Navy's two X-47B, known by their call signs as Salty Dog 501 and Salty Dog 502, <laughs> represent That's the most so cool. significant progress in unmanned combat aerial systems to date. With its distinctive sleek, stealthy, tailless profile, the aircraft has become a poster child for the future of military drone technology. It's super cool. But how did the program come about? And why was the Salty Dog retired? Why was the Salty Dog retired? <laughs> Northrop Grumman took an ambitious approach, Whoa. starting with the construction of a small proof of concept. That's it. That's it. Aliens drive that. Try and convince me otherwise. Look at it. Oh, my God. At that point, they should have just made it round and made it look like an actual UFO, shouldn't they? Demonstrator called X-47A Pegasus, which it funded entirely on its own. The X-47A fulfilled Northrop Grumman's objectives with its first and only flight in April 2003. Mental. The company then designed a much larger aircraft for the naval version requirement, the X-47B. Six years since the X-47B began development, Northrop Grumman finally received a contract to build two X-47Bs. In that time, military drones had become much more prominent as a result of the success of the MQ-1 Predator and MQ-9 Reapers in Afghanistan and Iraq. Do you know what blows my mind? It makes me think what they're working on that we don't even know about right now. Like, think about this 6th gen fighter jet that the US is supposed to be working on, like... When it does get revealed, it's going to absolutely blow our mind, isn't it? 
without a shadow of a doubt. I bet some of the stuff they're working on now, if you saw it flying over your house, you would genuinely report it as a UFO. I bet there's some absolutely mental concepts at the moment. The development costs were quite significant, reaching nearly $1.5 billion by 2015. The program meshed well with evolving Navy requirements. One such requirement was that the drone be capable of long-range strike missions, reflected the Navy's new China-centric strategic orientation, mm. including increasing anxiety over advances in Chinese anti-shipping technologies that yeah. would require the U.S. Navy to have the ability to launch attacks from a greater range. Yeah, that makes sense. At the end of the day, they're only... Look at that. They're only going to build these things if there's a need for it, let's be honest. The X-47B so cool. has an overall design similar to that of the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. Yeah. It features a blended wing body with no vertical stabilizer. That that style of the B-2 and even the B-1, uh, sorry, the B-2B, is that what I'm thinking of? It's just, it's it's almost like, it's it's got to be one of the most unique style of wings like as soon as you see like a b2 bomb you like you know exactly what it is right like to copy that like it's such a unique style and i think it, it does you know automatically lend to like some sort of weird futuristic vibe to it doesn't it and above its pointed nose sits the air intake for a single pratt and whitney f100 220u turbofan engine which is the same engine used in the f-16 fighting falcon oh the engine is a two-shaft, afterburning turbofan that produces up to 17,000 pounds of thrust. The engine's designed to provide the drones with a high level of performance and maneuverability. The X-47B has a wingspan of 62 feet and a length of 38 feet, with an empty weight of approximately 14,000 pounds and maximum takeoff weight of 44,000 pounds. What blows my mind is there's someone on that ship just with, just with, a, with a little TV just like flying it a little remote control just flying that thing around the sky <laughs> crazy it can provide a cruising speed of 685 miles per hour and has an operational range in excess of 2100 nautical miles so obviously it's not it's crazy fast but is up to 40 000 feet Woo. the x-47b's flight test began in 2011 and lasted slightly over four years during this period, it demonstrated the ability to perform a full range of shipboard and non-combat aerial operations, such as deck handling, launch and recovery, wow, look at that. manned aircraft operations, and in-air refueling from a manned tanker. These were all significant achievements for autonomous UAVs. Yeah. Then, when the X-47B autonomously landed on the aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush, <laughs> many hailed it as a historic <laughs> moment in the development of military drone technology. It definitely is. It 100% is a historic moment, that. As carrier landings are among the most challenging tasks for pilots, on November 10th, 2013, the testing of the X-47B continued aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. During this phase, the digitized carrier controlled environment of the UAV was tested, including the communication and interaction between the drone and carrier personnel during launch, recovery, and flight operations. I love seeing these drone videos. We've done some videos on drones now, but I genuinely want to see like the behind the scenes of them being flown, like the person sat down flying it. With that being said, I wonder if they're even able to show that stuff. I bet they're not even able to show that, you know. Besides that, on August 17th, 2014, the X-47B made history by taking off and landing on Theodore Roosevelt alongside an F-18 Hornet. Nice. Marking the first time a UAV operated in conjunction with manned aircraft aboard an aircraft carrier. Nice. The Hornet was launched from the carrier, followed by the X-47B. Ooh, <laughs> I would love to have seen that in person. Flight, the X-47B touched down and immediately took off again to verify system behavior. Wow. After 24 minutes, the X-47B landed on the flight deck and taxied away to make room for the Hornet to land. The demonstration met all test objectives and marked the X-47B's That is mental. And this was back in what, 2011, did they say? Or was it a little bit after that? So this is a while. This is over 10 years ago. Drone had completed eight catapult launches from a carrier. Oh, was it 2015? And seven arrested landings aboard the George H.W. Bush and Theodore Roosevelt. It might have said 2015. 
Additionally, nighttime taxi and deck handling operations were performed for the first time. The X-47B met its objective of performing launches and recoveries at 90-second intervals with manned Hornets. Amazing. In April 2015, the X-47B achieved another okay. milestone by successfully conducting the world's first autonomous aerial refueling with wow. the Omega Air KC-707 tanker over the coast of Maryland. That's amazing. Look at that. That thing's unmanned. <laughs> We're in the future. Guys. This was 2015. This was nine years ago. Think about what they're doing now that we don't know about. This marked the completion of all primary demonstration tasks required of the drone. That was, it was within limits, 20027, and that was at uh, time 55, so it's, it's staying pretty strong. It may go over Although the X-47 successfully proved that a carrier air wing could operate a large drone, the ability to operate in a contested high threat and dynamic environment, which is the Navy's ultimate goal for a carrier-based combat drone, is much more challenging. Mm. Since the X-47B program did not include any weapons or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance ISR tests, it failed to validate the unmanned combat air vehicle's survivability in a range of contested threat environments. Okay, so basically, we, we don't know how versatile this thing is in, like, its ability for its actual role. Like, it can take off, it can land, it can do all these other things. But, and again, I've gone over this plenty of time, versatility is incredibly important. So knowing what it's capable of with surveillance or weapons, etc., we don't know. Nor did it establish which missions would be best suited for such technology. Yeah, okay. At yeah. this point, the program's conclusions suggest that while impressive, the existing core technologies present in the X-47B may have some way to go before they can support autonomous combat operations. My presumption is at this point, we probably already nailed that now, if I'm honest with you. In February 2016, the Navy decided to repurpose the X-47B from a surveillance and strike aircraft into a reconnaissance and aerial refueling drone with limited strike capability. That makes sense. That makes sense because why not? It can. We know it can do that. That yeah, that makes total sense. Top level review and restructuring of the now defunct U-class project. In its stead came a much less ambitious competition to supply a carrier-based drone tanker. Mm. This was known as the Carrier-Based Aerial Refueling System, CBARS program. Still super which cool. Boeing 1 and Northrop Grumman suddenly elected not to compete in. Even though at least one of the X-47Bs was equipped with a refueling pod in preparation for the tender. The adventures of the X-47B ended here. Oh, such a They've shame. They stored at the company's sprawling Plant 42 facility in Palmdale, California, where they remain to this day. Oh, that's such a shame that they're just stored there, isn't it? Look at that. That's crazy. Like, if you show me that footage, like, before I started learning more about aircraft and drones and stuff, if you show me, like, a picture of that without all the text, I'd be like, oh, my God, they've got UFOs. Oh, that's a UFO. Look at it. It's deeply regrettable that the X-47B never entered service, and as a result, the Navy took a step back. That's such a shame. However, a new drone, the MQ-25 Stingray, is scheduled to join the fleet in 2026 as an aerial refueling drone. While this is a significant advancement that'll extend the reach of manned aircraft, it may not be the type of drone that fighting enthusiasts had in mind. Yeah. Thank you. With that being said, I think Gen 6 aircraft are going to be mostly unmanned. I really do. Which I hope we get more news on Gen 6 soon. That guy got hyped, didn't he? Oh my days. Look at that. A work of, it's a work of art, isn't it? That's what it is. That's a work of art more than anything. Absolutely incredible. What a great video, as always, by US Military News. That's it, pretty much. You should definitely go over there, check them out, give them a like and subscribe. They make incredible, incredible videos. I'd love to know where um, the technology is being used now because I can guarantee that they're going to be using it in some way and making these even better. Like, the, the technology that they're probably using now, would we probably wouldn't even believe it's real. We probably can't even think of it. Do you know what I mean? And this is how advanced America is when it comes to their military. Absolutely mind-blowing. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.